Well, hello, folks, and welcome to the Dieter Melhorn Fishing Podcast. I hope you're having a good day, whatever day it is that you happen to be listening to the show or watching it. I know a lot of folks are watching the podcast on YouTube. I put up a video version for most of the podcast uh, that you can see there on the channel. Uh, I've noticed that some people like the podcast version, which is available on all the popular platforms out there. Or you can watch it slash listen to it uh, on YouTube. I know I am very guilty of, uh, I may be driving somewhere and will pull up a program on YouTube and listen to it. Uh, especially if it's put together well and you can listen through it. <clears throat> it's it's cool to listen to them. And that's kind of why I started doing this on YouTube. It's not the best thing for my channel. I understand that as far as growth and everything else. But you, the fans, enjoy watching and listening. And the people out there enjoy listening to it on the traditional podcast platforms that are out there. It's on all of them, so it's pretty easy to find. Same name on YouTube, same name for the podcast, same name on Facebook, Dieter Melhorn Fishing. Pretty easy. Uh, if you ever want to give me any feedback, obviously on the YouTube channel, you can put comments down in the comment section. But on the podcast, it's a little harder. So go to my website, DieterMelhornFishing.com. And there's a contact section that you can reach out to me, send me an email, let me know what you think. I love hearing from you guys. I get great feedback, and it's really appreciated. And uh, so, yeah, that's the easiest way to get a hold of me. Uh, it's also got links to the YouTube channel. There's links to my guide business here in the Carolinas uh, doing guided fishing trips. Uh, there's links to the gear that I use. I get a lot of emails and questions about what I'm using, different things you see in the video. Pretty much everything you see is in the gear section on my website, so you can go there and look at it. Uh, you can actually order it. They're all Amazon affiliate links. You can click on, it, on them and order the stuff if it's something you like. And uh, some of the partners that were uh paired up with uh, for some of the tackle rods reels like the uh, folks at Catfish that have this beautiful light here. You can't see it on the podcast, but you can see it on the YouTube version. We got a big catfish on the wall, a big neon light behind us, which is really cool. And the folks from Catch the Fever over here, we got the Hellcat rods. You can't see that on the podcast either, but uh, if you're looking for any of those products, you like those, we use them in all of our videos. All there are links to all that on the website. So, Enough with that. Enough with the plugs. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I put up a podcast that was talking about the American Catfishing Association, known as the ACA, and their first Hall of Fame induction ceremony that took place at the Catfish Conference in Louisville, Kentucky. And uh, I voiced my opinion on it, and uh, I had some concerns and things about it, but i uh, got that out there. I invite you to go listen to it. It's on the YouTube channel. And it's also a podcast here on my podcast channel. Um, and go listen to it. I had some opinions on it. And uh, from what I could see in the feedback, <clears throat> uh, on the YouTube channel especially, is most people were somewhat in agreement with what I said. And uh, I don't expect everybody to agree with everything I say in this world. And I'm perfectly okay with that. But... Uh, it seemed like there were a lot of people in agreement. There were some people that made some arguments for some of the things I said, and that's cool. I love hearing it. I love the feedback I, because the one thing about my listeners on YouTube, it seems to be like they're smart people. I get some pretty intelligent feedback on stuff, stuff that is well thought out and very well articulated, and I appreciate that, folks. I appreciate it from you guys listening to the podcast when you send me emails. Got a great fan base, some smart people out there. And anyway... Uh, there were some people at the ACA that were not happy with what I said. And as I've said before, I've said to them and I'll say to you guys, I'm not a cheerleader for the ACA. I am a member. I want the ACA, the American Catfishing Association, to succeed probably as bad as or worse than anybody uh, or more than anybody. Uh, I want to see the organization succeed for one reason that we're getting ready to get into. Uh, but uh, I'm not a cheerleader. When they do something wrong, I'm going to let them know it. Uh, I'm going to let the public know it. And um, I do that for one reason, not to tear it down, but to hold them accountable. Because I'll tell you right now, some of the things I've said and brought up in the past, changes have been made. And if everybody just sits back and says, oh, this is great. Yeah, we love it. Nothing will ever change. So I do it in a hopes that things will get better. And that brings me to my point of why this is a warning about the ACA. 
And this is for you folks out there that are looking for change, uh, especially when it comes to conservation. The ACA is the best shot that we have and that we have had for putting any kind of conservation changes in pedal place. What do I mean by conservation? I also mean uh, sustainability of the catfish resource. Many people have talked about having a national organization, uh, a, a unifying force. Many people have heard, talked about different organizations. We need to do this. I see that all the time on Facebook when something happens. Somebody needs to do something. That's the common cry. Somebody needs to do something. Well, guess what? Up to this point, very few people have stepped up and tried to put changes into effect. Saying you want to do something and doing it are two different things. So I say all this to say that the ACA is our best shot at having that, seeing that happen. Uh, it's our best shot at having a national organization in the catfishing community. Uh, never before has an organization tried to be built with the names that it has attached, namely Bill Dance. Bill Dance, well, I don't think he should have been in the first uh, Hall of Fame uh, class. I do think he is a recognizable face like no other in the fishing industry. And the fact that he's behind this and he's at least putting his face out there and speaking for it, you won't get anybody like that again. If this organization fails, you won't have somebody like that again that's going to step up and do it. I don't see Kevin Van Dam stepping up and doing this or Michael Iaconelli or anybody like that from the bass world. So it's about as big a name as you can get. And Bill Dance transcends the fishing world. People outside the fishing world know who this guy is. So what I'm getting at is if you let this fail – it's you're probably not going to see anything like it in your lifetime is what it comes down to uh and hey maybe the catfish world doesn't need it maybe it's not ready for it maybe it doesn't have the support to have an organization a national organization uh that is basically the voice for the people from the catfish community but I think it does. I think there's enough people interested in catfish, and I think we've seen that interest grow over the past several years. I think it needs a national organization, and I think this is our best shot at getting one. Uh, and that's my warning. For all the people out there who want a national organization, want something, want a voice, uh, want a mouthpiece, uh, this is your best shot. And I know some people are hesitant to join. I understand that. Uh, but if you, as I've said before, this is your chance. Uh, if you're in support of that, I would suggest joining and for at least a short time period. And let me say this. This is not being done at uh, the instigation of the people at the ACA. Trust me on that. They would probably appreciate if I would keep my mouth shut when it comes to their organization. I'm saying all this uh, from me and from my point of view on this. I think the organization needs a fair shake and it needs, it's going to need some time to get the ball up and rolling uh, and get things rolling. Right now, and I've been critical of this, they've been hyper focused on the tournament world because it's the low hanging fruit, it's the easy money, it's the easy anglers, uh, the biggest sponsor they've got being Sea Arc Boats. Uh, it's, you know, it's great for them because they can sell boats with bigger live wells and all that kind of stuff. But the, the people who are going to carry it to the next level are going to be, you know, guys like you and I, uh, gals like you, not I, but, you know, basically the, the common angler out there, people who are not that, or, you know, interested in tournaments. You know, if it's like me, I'll fish some. Yeah, that's fun. But I'm not hyper-focused on that. I spend 98% of my time out there fishing, not fishing tournaments. So those are the people that are going to need to get on board. It's going to be people who want a future for their grandkids and their kids and, and seeing, you know, the fish protected, making sure the resource is sustainable, and uh, just making sure we got everything in place down the road. So 
while they're doing the tournament stuff, that's great. I think that's great to keep those people on board. Uh, I think the bigger picture is going to be getting folks like you out there that aren't tournament anglers uh, on board with it too. And listen, like I said, if you join, hold them accountable. Uh, voice your opinion. Uh, voice your pleasure. Voice your disdain. Let them know which way they need to go. Because I'll be honest with you, and I've told them this. The organization, in my opinion, cannot see the forest for the trees because most of those people don't have a hand on a rod, okay? When you've got a council of directors that are not out there fishing as much as some of you, as me, I don't think they're totally in touch with you and I and the people who are watching this podcast. So we need to remind them. And that's why I do these podcasts. That's why I do these videos. That's why it's not a cheerleading session. They've got plenty of cheerleaders. They got plenty of yes men. They got plenty of people that will never say a word publicly about anything bad that they're doing. I'll be that guy. I don't have a problem doing that because I think if we do, and if the points are valid, valid, and if we have solutions to those problems that we can present to them, I think they'll make the changes. The people who run the organization are not idiots. Don't get me wrong. They're very smart people. They're very good business people. They're probably better business people than they are anything. And we need that. Uh, I don't think an organization like this can be run by a bunch of anglers that know nothing about putting any of this stuff together. Glenn has done an amazing job getting this to where it's at. And for the most part, this has kind of been a one-man band operation uh, with, with Glenn doing this. There are contractors that come in to do pieces of it. But he spearheaded a lot of this. And uh, a lot of it, from you know, to, to be perfectly honest, it's out of his wheelhouse as far as being an angler and coming from the catfish world. But he understands the business. He's very good with making the connections. And he is somebody that, honestly, an organization like this has to have. It's not that they need them. They have to have somebody like this. So, uh, Glenn does listen. Uh, he's the mouthpiece. He's the guy you see out there in the front all the time if you watch any of their videos or anything. So, he's the guy that's kind of the, the, the front guy. Uh, he will listen. He's a smart guy. Uh, he may not like what you got to say. He doesn't like a lot of what I've got to say. But he will listen. He's a smart guy. He'll take it to heart. And um, trust me. He wants to see this succeed uh, as bad as I do, probably more because he's got skin in the game on this. So uh, that's my whole point. That's my warning to everybody out there. If you want a National League organization, the ACA is your shot. Uh, I don't see anybody, uh, not even remotely close, that will be able to do and get off the ground what they've gotten off the ground. So my suggestion, my hope, my thing to you is I'd consider it. I definitely would consider it. And uh, if it's something you can do, something you can afford, not everybody can afford to throw that money away. Uh, you know, I say throwing it away because honestly, you're not getting a whole lot tangible. Yeah, I think you get a hat, you get a decal, you get some kind of discount program. But the bottom line is you're making a donation is what it is to put this organization in place. So that's my rant. That's my message. That's my uh, that's my hope for all of this. Uh, I felt it was only fair to uh, do this podcast uh, after the last one. Uh, some people may have taken the last one to be a negative slam on them. I don't think it was a negative slam on the ACA because I asked people then to consider joining, just like I ask you now. So, uh, but in thinking about it, I look at it and I go, you know. Uh, this is the catfishing communities one that was said very poorly. That is the catfish communities chance. This is our chance to have a national organization. And uh, I think if we want that, uh, you need to jump on board with it. And, uh, if you don't, then you probably just need to, uh, Take what you get, um, because uh, I think this is our last shot at, at having a group. So anyway, that's a whole lot of rambling, a whole lot of stuff, but I uh, wanted to put it out there. Give you something to think about. Give you something to consider. Would love to hear your feedback. Uh, again, on YouTube, put it down in the comment section. Uh, would love to hear it there. Send me an email. Give me some thoughts. I had some people email me after the last uh, podcast that I did about the ACA, and, uh, you know, uh, give me some thoughts and ideas. Some of that kind of, you know, was kind of the, the the motivation for this podcast so i appreciate that i always do and uh until next time we'll catch you guys out on the water mm -hmm.
Well, folks, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Here are a couple more videos that I think you're going to like. I'd watch that one and then that one. No, no, do, do that one first and then that one. I, I don't know. Just watch them both. They're both good.